Aloha, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Master Paul. Very happy, very joyful to be connecting with you today. It is a Thursday and it is the 12th day of July. My goodness, how fast this month July is moving. And today, for those that have just tuned in on this live stream, we're going to be focusing on spiritual testing. What is it and how can you pass it? Spiritual testing is a very, um, it's a subject that I had not known a lot about until, <laughs> until I started training with Master Shah. And uh, we were very blessed to have quite a bit of it. It still continues. And it tends to be associated with those who want to grow on their spiritual journey versus those who want to be stagnant. There is actually a difference. So... For those of you that are curious about it, would like to know a little bit more about it, what is it, how to define it, and more importantly, how do you pass it, um, I encourage you to stick around. You might find some very good information today. So thank you for joining. And also thank you for hitting on that share button to let other people know about today's live stream. I was uh, looking through a few of Master Shaw's books on this subject matter. And I know he has written about it here or there, but not in great depth. So I was actually unable to find any specific information, although it's probably there. So I will share with you some wisdom that he has shared in his retreats. Uh, there has been quite a few long and uh, well-placed um, teachings from his top teachers and from Master Shah himself. So I have a wealth of knowledge to work with to share with you today on this subject matter. And then uh, also, I will be able to give you some personal insights. Most all of us have some form of spiritual testing happening in our life. Even if we are not spiritual beings, we just don't see it as spiritual testing. We just see it as life beating us over the head. But that's rarely the case because we are spiritual beings from the beginning of our creation and uh, <laughs> To ignore that or to deny that, of course, is not going to assist us in the forward progress of our soul journey. So let's see who's checked in with us so far today. Hard to see the first words in here. Welcome, Shirley. Welcome, Pamela Karma. Welcome, Jota. Welcome also to uh, Neelam Rai. Aloha, Lee Ram. Aloha, Lindsay Lay. Uh, Aloha, Jennifer Hewlin. Welcome also to Shai Shai. And welcome, Rosetta. Aloha and welcome to Tanuja Patel. Welcome also to Master Elizabeth. Welcome, Lisa Zarniak. Aloha, Jennifer Cressmith. Uh, and I may have missed one or two there. Welcome, Britta Schmidt. And Aloha, Jordan Stone. Thank you all for coming. Thank you also for hitting the share button. Uh, I may have missed your name if it is because I can't see it, but thank you for coming. So if you missed Tuesday's live stream, I do recommend that you go back and see that. And you can do that by attending my Facebook page. Uh, it was on Shurfus. And what is a Shurfu? How do you communicate with your Shurfu? Uh, and what is the importance and relevance of a Shurfu in your life? And in that live stream, I touched on the difference between a Shurfu and your Heaven's Team and the difference between a Shurfu and Spirit Guides because there is a difference. And I touched on that and went into some details as well. So if you missed that, I encourage you to go back and watch that. It was an important wisdom and teachings there. And then the previous week, I know I, I offered a pretty big blessing as well. So... Always uh, take advantage of those kinds of conditions when you can. Welcome, Aileen Berent. Uh, welcome also to uh, Ilona, Andre. So thank you for coming. Let's go ahead and connect heart to heart, soul to soul, while Facebook is out gathering a few more souls. We place our hands in the soul light, soul service hand position, which is a hand mudra position that Master Shah has brought to humanity. Hand mudra positions are throughout all the teachings of the East, Yogic teachings, Eastern teachings, it's where you place your hands is where energy goes. So by placing them in this prayer position, we drop the left hand in front of the heart center, 
the right hand remains pointed towards heaven, and this allows uh, heaven to come through our hand into our heart center. Close your eyes, and we'll call forth the beings of light. Dear our beloved divine creator, all layers of the divine, the Tao, the source, all committees in heaven, Dear the soul of all the angels, healing angels and archangels, masters and ascended masters, gurus, lamas, sifus, saints, buddhas and bodhisattvas, all those serving the planet of the light side, including beloved Jesus and Mother Mary, beloved Amitofu, beloved Kuan Yin, all the Indian saints, including Vishnu, Krishna, Ganesha and more. Dear the soul of all the beings of light, stars, planets, galaxies and universes, serving the light side. We love you, honor you, respect you. And we invite you most humbly and sincerely to join us today. We invite our individual heavens teams, guides, angels, and saints to please join us today. We ask forgiveness for this lifetime and any lifetime that we have made mistakes and brought harm or suffering to any souls anywhere in time. We do not wish to continue to make mistakes. We wish to assist others to be happier and healthier. So we ask forgiveness. We also offer our unconditional forgiveness to all the souls that have harmed us. Dear the soul of the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony, transmitted to all souls in all universes, we love you, we honor you, appreciate you, respect you. Please turn on. We invite all souls in all universes to chant with us at this time the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony. And as we chant this song, this is to set the energy field. This is to connect heart to heart, soul to soul, and this is also a calling tool and a healing tool. So you can learn more at lovepeaceharmony.org. And you can also download the Love Peace Harmony app and play the song and learn more about it. So let us chant together one round to offer this service. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lula, li, lula, lula, li, lula, lula, li, lula. Wo ai wo xian herling, wo ai tran nan lei, rong ling rong her mu shir shang. Shang I ping on a she, Shang I ping on a she. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace and harmony love peace and harmony how 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 thank you thank you thank you and thank you to the source for delivering that song to humanity so let me just check one thing here give me a moment please okay and um, Kristen, if you wouldn't mind taking a moment and posting in my chat groups, my uh, Facebook chat groups, to the students that I work with so that they know that I am live on this teaching. Thank you. Kristen Rojas uh, is my right-hand helper. She is present at this time and assisting. Thank you, Kristen. Okay, so welcome also to uh, Ellen. Welcome, Ilona. Welcome, Patty. Laramore. Welcome, Angela. Welcome, Joy Weber, and aloha, Kristen Strachan. Great to see you here. I know it's tough for you to tune in when you're out delivering those packages. Um, welcome, Cheryl Pusins. Welcome also, Carl Streener and NNC. Aloha, uh, Marion Erb, and welcome, Danta. Thank you all for joining. Thank you also for clicking on the share button. If I missed your name again, forgive me. As Master Shah would say, if your name is not mentioned, even bigger blessings. So today's subject, spiritual testing, what is it and how do you pass it? As I indicated earlier, there is some passages on this in some of Master Shah's books. I was unable to locate the specific passages to work directly with you. And so 
in working with spiritual testing and the teaching and understanding of spiritual testing, I'll be sharing with you the wisdom that Master Shah has taught in many of his events and retreats and some of his top teachers have taught. One of his top teachers is Master Peter Hudoba. And I encourage you to connect with Master Peter uh, through any of the online videos that he has and, and any of the events that he teaches at. Uh, he is a traveling teacher, so he does go from a location to location and teach. Uh, and he is in charge of Master Saw's research department. So he is um, a devoted student. And as a devoted student, as Master Shah's first student, he went through spiritual testing, significant versions and amounts of it. And unfortunately, he did not know that's what it was because Master Shah at that time had not taught him about spiritual testing. So what is it that he was going through? Well, first of all, when you, when I, when any individual makes any form of commitment to join or to do spiritual testing, excuse me, when I'm kind of reading multiple texts that are grabbing my attention, let me focus. When somebody makes a commitment on their spiritual journey, they are committed to their growth, to their well-being. And heaven hears your commitment. In other words, if you said, dear God, dear heaven, dear Buddha, dear Krishna, whoever, you're, uh, uh, whoever you connect with at the level of soul, whoever you connect with at the highest levels, when you make a commitment to your spiritual journey that you wish to grow, that you wish to uh, learn more, accept more, when you wish to awaken, uh, reach enlightenment, whatever your commitment is, heaven writes this down. They write it down in your Akashic records. And instantly, you are given an opportunity to achieve what you have requested. What does that mean instantly? That means that heaven puts into, uh, into the web of your life opportunities, this is a very key word, opportunities to pass a experience that if passed moves you much closer to the goal that you said you wanted to achieve. So if you said, I want to become enlightened, Dear heaven, I'm tired of reincarnation. I want to finish this life. Please help me to just do what I need to do to become enlightened and complete this coming back and getting you know, beat over the head again and again and again. Whatever your commitment to your spiritual journey. Now, some people are not that committed. Some people are very um, haphazard about it. They flit around to this form of wisdom and that form of wisdom. And they're just like, they're like a, uh, at a smorgasbord, uh, you know, at a buffet line where there's a hundred choices of food. And I'll try a little bit of this, a little bit of that. They're not necessarily on a dedicated spiritual journey. They're on a, I'm going to try all these different foods spiritual journey. Now, at some point, they're going to try a food that they really, really like. It'll probably be in the form of a really good teacher that has a dedicated path and a dedicated interest. And something about their soul teaches that person, eat more of this food, chronologically speaking. And so when you find the right teacher, when you find the right um, wisdom that aligns to your soul, doesn't have to be this one, doesn't have to be the wisdom of Master Shah, it can be any uh, wisdom. If it aligns to your soul and it grabs you, then that is what's good for you for that period of time. Could be one year, two years, could be your whole life. When that happens, you are on a dedicated path. When that happens, you will receive testing. <laughs> Make no, no doubt about it. So what does testing look like? It comes in the form of experiences. They could be one-to-one, -one, person to person experiences. It could be experiences about life that when we say, oh my God, I can't believe that just happened. You know, life happens to us. It could be things like car accidents. It could be things like money coming into your life. It could be things like, people uh, that you love passing, moving on in the world. It could be um, arguments with loved ones and spouses that you haven't had arguments with in forever. It can show up in any form that you can possibly imagine. How do you know it's a test? Because if you find yourself frustrated, 
irritated, poked at, angry. If you find yourself in any emotional space that is other than love, caused by events outside of you, and sometimes your own mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs, basically if you find yourself in an emotional imbalance, you are being tested. Very simple. So I'm sure if I did a uh, poll right now that all of you could say, well, I'm living a test. I'm walking through a test. You would all say, I have emotional imbalances all the time. People are always testing me. People are always causing me to be angry. People are always making me sad or whatever it might be. So this is another form of a test. If you're doing this, if you're pointing, people are always doing this to me. If you are pointing outside of yourself, they are the ones that are doing it. Anytime you do anything outside of yourself, point outside of yourself, that's a definite clue that you are not passing your test. Okay? Because the highest wisdom from any of the highest teachings will tell you that when we are um, when we are not passing our tests, things get worse. When we are not passing our tests, things tend to keep coming to us. What does it look like when you pass your test? When you start to pass your test, it looks like, oh, I see you as a test. Oh, I am angry. Oh, I am irritated. Oh, I was about ready to point my finger at that person, and I was about ready to tell them off. I was about ready to let them know how wrong they were. A person who is on a spiritual journey, think about it. Who do you, who do you um, idolize in a loving manner, for example? Is it Krishna? Is it Jesus? Is it Buddha? Is it God? In a good manner. You know, we look up to these beings. Why? Because they represent the pure, highest purity. They represent the highest um, love. So if somebody said, I hate you to Jesus, what could you imagine Jesus' response would be? What could you imagine your response might be? You're a son of a blah, 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 blah. What would your response be? What would Jesus' response be? It's very difficult, actually, in many cases, to respond positively when we are hit upside the head by unpleasant things. It's very difficult to not point at these and those peoples and say that they're the ones that brought it to me. It's not my fault. A spiritual being on a spiritual journey takes responsibility. And that is one of the hardest tests of all. It is not easy, even a little bit, to take responsibility for everything. Now, granted, things happen, okay? It doesn't mean that, you know, you caused a roller coaster accident. Things do happen. You know, we are in the web of life of 7 billion people. But even in that statement, everything is interconnected. So when things happen that we assume is a negative, it doesn't always have to be perceived as such. Part of a spiritual testing is recognizing it as a testing and then framing it reframing it in a manner that you can pass the test. This is an exceedingly important statement. What did I say earlier? Looking at everything as an opportunity. We must look at everything as an opportunity. We can't see it as an opportunity if we're stuck in victim mode. We can't see it as an opportunity if we are stuck in pain. We cannot see it as an opportunity if we are stuck pointing the finger outside of ourselves and not taking responsibility. In all of those cases, we are just not passing the test. Why do these things come to us? I don't want it anymore. A lot of you probably don't. I don't want it anymore. If that's the way it is, I don't want it anymore. Why are they spiritual tests? And what is the value of passing them? When we pay attention, when we see these experiences come to us, 
a spiritual aspirant, someone on the journey, someone that wishes to awaken and stop their own suffering, just stops it, puts up their head and says, whoa, I recognize this. I have a choice. I can react and respond. Just the words reaction and responding is defensiveness. Trust me, I, no, I'm no guru in any of this. I, I fail left and right 20 times a day. I also get it right 20 times a day. So 40 tests a day, I get half of them right. The other half, I fail miserably. So it's an ongoing battle. But know that that's okay and that's completely normal. The key is to catch yourself and convert a reaction or a response See it, whatever it is, that is bringing an emotion that is anything other than love. See it as an opportunity. Because a spiritual being, Jesus, God, Buddha, Krishna, all of these spiritual beings would not respond in an unpleasant manner. The reason they are high-level spiritual beings is because they pass their tests. The same ones that you and I are struggling through. The reason these tests are given to us on an individual basis, they're tailor-made just for us. Heaven loves us so much. They make these spiritual tests very unique, special, just for us. That's how much they love you. And when they make a special test just for you, it is why you came here. You know, you didn't come to earth to suffer. You think you came here to suffer? No. You came here to elevate your soul journey, your soul standing. You came here to fully engulf yourself in a atmosphere of positivity and negativity of yin and yang so that you could level up your soul journey. You sit up there in heaven in a mountaintop saying, Om. You'll grow a little bit, but you're not going to grow near as much as when you're down here in the dirt. Dealing with love and hate and all the emotions in between from a high level emotional uh, spiritual perspective. That's when you grow leaps and bounds. Heaven gives you huge marks. The person that's down here on the battlefield working with everything that comes at them with love, forgiveness, with consciousness. When a spiritual test comes, instead of reacting and responding, they see it as an opportunity. They use the ten da wisdom love compassion forgiveness and light they use humility humility no ego they don't respond they use harmony they they choose to bring harmony to the situation with everything that comes to us we apply the ten da master shah's teachings and when we do at the end of this life we go back to heaven and we go to a mountaintop much higher than that guy up there that's sitting there chanting om on a mountaintop in heaven we go a lot higher because in the battlefield of earth where we are playing, it's much more difficult to pass the tests. Not difficult. You know, what kind of test do you get when you sit on a mountain and you're saying, oh, might be a little cold. You just have to suffer weather, right? That's, you, can, you can work through that one. But here, life, wow, beat you over the head. A lot tougher. So spiritual testing is offered to us with the greatest love because you and your soul have an agenda you came into this life to move forward your spiritual journey and as you go through your awakening process as you go through your process of healing uh understanding more and more step by step by step as you ask heaven for guidance Spiritual testing could come when you ask for guidance. Heaven, please help me, okay? They know exactly what to do to help you. You might say, just fix the problem. You know, heaven, please help me. Fix this problem. What does heaven do? They send you a series of conditions that if you pass the tests with love, forgiveness, compassion, light, humility, harmony, right thinking of flourishing, go out and serve others, then you'll pass those tests and all of a sudden your problem disappears. Heaven gives us exactly what we need. It's in almost every case our inability to see it exactly as that. Because 
we respond and we react from a place of the patterns. Our, our, our patterns in our life, the way we respond and react to our kids, the way we respond and react to our husbands, you know, they know exactly how to poke us in, the wrong, in, the, in that spot that causes us to fly off the hook, okay? Our, our loved ones, the ones closest to us, they, as you have heard many times, they are our biggest test, they are our biggest challenge. Okay, great, now that you know that, use them as an opportunity to pass the spiritual testing. Apply the 10 laws, not always easy. Granted, I go back to my statement before, 40 tests a day, I might pass 20 of them, the other 20 I fail miserably. How do I know I'm failing? I'm in the middle of pointing the finger at somebody else or being irritated or being angry or outburst or something that is obviously not love. Spiritual testing is the most beautiful gift that we can receive. It is truly, truly a beautiful gift. Do you think that Jesus, on his path of being able to turn the cheek, do you think it was always that way? Maybe, as a seven-year-old, some other kid whacked him, and he hit the kid back. He didn't learn a lesson at that time. But over the course of his life, he learned and learned and learned, and now he turns the other cheek. I don't know if that occurred, but it's certainly possible. All spiritual beings go through similar tests. And you are a spiritual being whether you want to admit it or not. We all are. We came in as a soul having a physical experience. This physical experience is for our soul journey. <laughs> Master Guo, Ma, who is Master Shah, is one of his highest direct teachers. He, he told Master Shah one day, he said, a life on earth that is not spent Supporting and moving forward your soul journey is a wasted life. Think about that. You know, the soul lives forever. We, maybe 100 years, right? You come in, maybe we have great success in this life. Maybe le next lifetime, uh, heaven gives us a certain set of parents and we come back in. And maybe we make some mistakes in that lifetime. And then we, we lose all of the benefits of the previous time. So how do we not make those same mistakes? In this lifetime, we awaken. In this lifetime, we make as many choices using the ten da as possible. We apply our wisdom in this life to remove our pain, remove our suffering through consciousness, through love, through forgiveness being compassionate, being filled with light, smile a lot, okay? Give your love to others through smiles. This is service, this is the ninth da, service. You can serve through smiles. Chant love, peace, and harmony. Be humble, remove ego, do not always defend yourself. As you do this through life, you are literally passing tests, passing tests, passing tests. When you pass tests, you are getting good karma, good karma, good karma when you with your loved ones family members children parents move through heavy layers of forgiveness forgive them for being unpleasant parents forgive the brother and sister for forsaking you for whatever their reasons were whatever it is doesn't matter forgive 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 when you come to the end of that life and you go back up to heaven they say great job you cleared up this karma, that karma, this karma, that karma, this one. Next time around, you won't have to deal with that. What does that mean? That means in the stock market of life, you won't have to have such deep lows because it's the high ups and the high downs that make it such a long, treacherous path on the way back to full enlightenment. It's the, if you can accomplish a lot because you became awake and applied the 10 das, well, great then your next lifetime could be substantially better. And then you have more gains on top of your gains on top of your gains. The stock market of your soul goes higher and higher and higher instead of the massive ups and downs. It really boils down to awakening and consciousness, being present in this life. Spiritual testing will never go away. It is the nature of your soul. It is the nature of being in this thing we call life. You'll have it when you're upstairs, you'll have it when you're downstairs. You can have less of it down here. 
you can basically just go hide in a room somewhere, lock yourself in, but you'll have testing in the mind. You know, you'll have all kinds of negativity. So you can't necessarily run away from it. How do you achieve success? Apply the 10 Da's. Continue to serve. You can serve from your room. Chant love, peace, and harmony. There are so many ways that you can make a difference in your life. Honestly, the number one thing you can do now to make a difference is stop blaming others. This is the number one thing you can do. You will discover very rapidly that if you stop putting the blame outside of yourself, or a different way to put that is no matter what happens, doesn't matter if it's a job, the boss, the other employees, the best friend that went south on you, the brothers or sisters, no matter who it is or what happens, if you take responsibility for it, that is the fast track to passing spiritual testing. It is the secret to passing spiritual testing. Because once you take responsibility, it literally shifts the way the brain thinks. It's very hard to react when you take responsibility. It's very difficult to um, not be present and aware when you take responsibility. It literally jerks you into an awareness place. And from that place of awareness, you can then consciously choose the ten da. I need to apply love. I need to apply forgiveness to this. I need to remain humble and not take this so personally. I need to be of greater service to offset this karma that's coming to me. I need to harmonize this situation. I need to be compassionate. This person is being very unpleasant towards me. And obviously, I have karma with this person. They are saying very unpleasant things and doing very unpleasant things. It must mean that I have, I take responsibility, I or my ancestors have done very unpleasant things to them in the past. I could have caused them to lose their job. I could have caused this, this, that. When we literally take responsibility for everything, we have an opportunity to instantly address it with love, forgiveness, compassion, and light. Humility, no ego. We have the opportunity to harmonize the situation in the moment. Granted, it's not always easy. As stated two times now, I fail this test 20 times a day. But fortunately, I'm getting better at it, and I pass tests 20 times a day. You might start out with passing it twice a day and failing 19 times. Great. Congratulations. You passed two of them. Take the positive, work with it, work towards three, to three passing the test the next day. Okay? So really, it's just about taking responsibility. Sometimes that's really, really hard because that other person is just, you know, an SOB. If you know what that is... <laughs> Google it, okay? Sometimes the conditions are so difficult, it's just the mind can't comprehend how can I possibly take responsibility for this? How can I even go there? That's possible, right? If those kinds of conditions occur, just stay with love and light. You don't have to comprehend it. Just choose the highest and best response. You can't comprehend something. It doesn't mean you have to attach to it. it. doesn't mean you have to go down the angry road or the irritation road or the defense road. Those are options. Those are patterns. How have those served you in the past? You know, there's a lot of people that run through life. Their ego is so extraordinarily powerful that they just blame it on everybody else, and that keeps them from being responsible. Some people, they just, that's their modem operandi. They just know how to blame others. Okay, so what is your part in that? Maybe you had a lifetime in which that's all you did. These kinds of souls have very, very low self-esteem. They can't stand being uh, under the gun. They, they, they don't want to be put down, and so they put down others. They blame others. That's a very low self-esteem issue. 
everybody has their protection mechanisms. When we take responsibility and we ask forgiveness, this is a very important teaching. I've taught this many times before. I'll teach it again. Maybe you'll get a different angle on it this time. When we take responsibility for something that we don't really understand, it's like, how can it possibly be that I have to take responsibility for this, the way this person is being towards me? Blah, blah, blah. Okay, here is the very important teaching. You, in this life, may be an awesome person. You would never be that way towards somebody else. Congratulations, if you are. It doesn't mean you've always been an awesome person. It could be that that person is being exceedingly unpleasant to you because in a previous time that you can't remember now, you could have been exceedingly unpleasant to them. Very important to remember that. And that's where you do a depthful forgiveness. You sincerely apologize to them, to their soul. If you were ever the way they are to you at a previous time, then it must have really, really, really sucked for them. Because you know how much it sucks for you, right? You're at the other end of it. You know how much it stinks for you. Put the shoe on the other foot. Imagine just how much it must have sucked for them if you were that kind of unpleasant person towards them. When you put the shoe on the other foot, when you flip the emotion, you can be truly compassionate and truly from a place of deep forgiveness. And if you do that consistently with that, in this example, one person that you just can't seem to understand why they're so mean to you, if you consistently and compassionately ask forgiveness for being that way towards them in other times that you can't remember, that you can't comprehend, then what happens is their soul forgives you. Your soul and their soul mend things, fix things. You pass the spiritual test. They then become nice. It might take two or three or four weeks. It might take two months of you doing your forgiveness practice. But you watch. They will transform. They will stop being mean. They will stop being unpleasant. They might even... One day, just be like a friend. This happens all the time. So, in conclusion, spiritual testing is an opportunity. It is an opportunity to move your soul journey forward instead of staying stagnant or going backwards. How do you know you're under spiritual test? If you have any emotion that is anger, irritation, anything that is not love and or you're pointing the finger outside of yourself you are in the middle of a test and it's highly likely you're not passing it but in the catching of it you are seeing that you are not responding and reacting in a loving manner you're not applying the ten da in a healthy manner and in catching it you are saying ah I take responsibility. I know I'm not a bad person. I'm a good person. But I recognize that everything has come into my life for a reason. Let me turn my cheek and look how I can respond with love, compassion, light. Not take this personally, not respond with ego, not respond from any place other than humility. Be of service. And wash this away lovingly. Heaven makes note. Congratulations, my son, my daughter. You've passed this spiritual test. We're going to move you forward on your journey. Remove these karmas from your life so you don't have to deal with them again. And you go forward. Life gets a little bit better. If you don't, you think heaven's not going to give you more tests? It'll keep coming. <laughs> these keep coming. So... This is the teaching for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to receive a crown chakra blessing for passing spiritual testing, you can receive that. You can contact me directly. Crown chakra blessings are $100. What does it do? It removes a lot of Shen Qi Jing blockages of things that could be coming in your life. Kind of rewires the thinking helps you to see things differently, helps you to pass the tests.
you can let me know if that's of interest to you. Thank you, Master Shah. Thank you to all Master Shah's top teachers for the wisdom they've ever shared. Thank you, Heaven, for all the spiritual testing I have ever received. I'm truly grateful for it because it has assisted me to help others and pass my tests. I love you all. I will see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye, everybody.